Hi everyone, it's Anne from Art on the Creek and I have a fun surprise for us today. I don't know what's in here. Irene at Inkworks is so knowledgeable with fountain pens and um, I just love her artwork. This is just what she would probably call a doodle, but um, I just, she's amazing. She's just amazing. Look at this fun letter that she sent and there's something inside. I don't know what it is. Um, and I'm looking forward to opening it. So I thought we could do that today just for fun on the channel. So without further ado, let's see what we got in the mail. Okay, let's see what we can discover here. I have no idea what's in here. I have no idea if uh, this is something that should be open in private or not. But let's just see. Let's just see what she sent. Oh, I see Arches Hot Press. Okay, what's happening? What's happening? <gasps> a note. A note, a note, a note. And it says, look at her beautiful handwriting. Oh my, this is a good long letter. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it's it's a wonderful personal letter here and I will read that off camera, but look at how wonderful she was. I asked her about paper and she sent me samples for the best paper to use for uh, fountain pen inks. And this is Tomoe River 52 GSM. She has sent me some Tomoe River 68 GSM. These are beautiful, smooth papers. And then we've got Claire Fontaine Triomphe. Ooh, 90 GSM. These are just so soft. I just kind of want to feel them all day. <laughs> and look at this. Isn't this lovely? Oh my goodness. Oh, these are so beautiful. Wow. Oh, Irene, thank you so much. Look at these beautiful pieces, you guys. One is on Arches Hot Press and the other one is on Arches Hot Press. They're both hot press paper. Wow. Oh, I love her work and I love how expressive these are. I bet she painted these with fountain pen inks. I will have to look and see. Oh my goodness, Irene, you are so generous. Thank you so much. So this brings me to what I want to talk about today and that is happy mail. You guys, it's, I don't want it to be a lost art. Doing something like this for just the price of two stamps, what is that, a little over a dollar if you're mailing in the United States? you can really make someone's day and Irene you did thank you so much I'm so excited to um, have these on my wall and have everyone see them uh, every time I do an intro to my channel so thank you so much oh I love them I will put a link to Irene's channel right up here so that you guys can go check her out and I'll also put a link in the description because she is a delight the stories that she tells are I can relate to so many of them she's a little bit younger than me um, but we have a lot of similarities growing up and uh, I just, I, I really love her and I hope that someday we can meet face to face. Um, at any rate, let's talk about happy mail. I will talk about all of these uh, fountain pen inks and papers at another time because that is something that I, I really do wanna get into uh, because I love fountain pens. Um, they're, they're some of my favorite things and I'm really happy to be able to have these to experiment with. But for now, I'm gonna set these beautiful works of art aside and look how fun those are. Look how expressive her work is. I just love it. I just love it. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's talk about Happy Meal. These are five by seven pads of watercolor paper and both of these happen to be from Meaden. They've gifted them to me. I've done uh, some uh, reviews. I've got a whole Meaden playlist actually and I'll, I will put that in the description below. Um, I really like using this size because they're so convenient for just a quick expressive painting like this or you can definitely um, you know, spend some time on it and paint something a little more detailed but this is the size of a greeting card. It's very easy to find an envelope to just put that in, or you can uh, trim it down and glue it onto a pre-made card and send it to someone for no reason other than just to say hello. And honestly, in my world, it's better than getting a text or a phone call because it says that you spent time. 
Um, that's kind of what I really appreciate. Excuse me, I got choked up there. That's what I really appreciate be, that goes behind anything creative is the time that it takes that uh, you really thought about that person while you were doing it. And um, I don't know, it's just, it's just a really fun lost art. So let's do some uh, uh, happy mail today. <laughs> and let's see uh, if we can just kind of do like a postcard um, and maybe, who knows, maybe you'll be inspired and you will strike up a pen pal relationship with someone. The last pen pal I had, uh, I was in high school and um, he was a student in Ulm, Germany. And uh, we just kind of became friends. Um, but I, I was a pen pal with my cousin, with my grandmother growing up. And uh, yeah, I, I I think I had the guy in Germany as a pen pal because in French class we had this list and we could exchange and for some reason I ended up with a, with a German student who wanted to speak English. I didn't get to use any of my French for that but uh, you know it's the way things go sometimes but <laughs> anyway um, let's talk about that. Let's talk about what we can do quick and easy to create a really beautiful happy meal for someone. So Irene has used hot press paper here. So let's go ahead and start off with some hot press and let's kind of see what we can do in the style of Irene Christensen. Let's see if we can have a lot of fun here. Okay, I'm going to start by using this paper. I think I'm gonna tape off a border just like she did because I wanna be just like you, Irene. <laughs> and the paper that I'm using is Meet In 100% Cotton. It is a block of watercolor paper, which means that it's adhered it's got the uh, adhesive, the gum adhesive around all four sides except for a little space right here. And you just put in a uh, paper separator or a bone folder or a palette knife, anything, and kind of go around and splice the, splice the adhesive. So, okay, so there's our border. So this is all we're working with. We're not going to do anything too, too major here. Uh, but let's start off with some fun brushes. I've got this one. It is a three-quarter inch uh, oval wash. It's an Aqua Elite. Let me get a paper towel set up here. And you know what else I think we're gonna need maybe is some paints. All right, I have one of my Da Vinci palettes today. So let's see what this one is. Oh, this is a pretty good split primary. There's a lot of yellows and, and warms in here. I think, uh, ooh, what would you add to this one? I think I would add maybe another, maybe a Payne's Gray is what I need. I've got Indigo and Burnt Sienna, so that'd mix of blacks. So I really wouldn't need that. I've got all these yellows, which I love. Red, a purple, green. Let me know in the comments, let me know what you would add to this palette. I have Hansa Yellow Medium, Hansa Yellow Deep, Nickel Azo Yellow, Alizarin Gold, which I love, uh, Quinacridone Red, red Quinacridone Violet, uh, Thalo Green, Cobalt Thalo Blue, Indigo, Indigo, Raw Sienna, Burnt Sienna. Maybe I should add another red, like a warm red. I don't know. All right, let me know what you think. Meanwhile, let's get this wet and let's see what we can come up with. Put this here, put this here. I want you guys to kind of be able to see everything that I'm working on. I'll turn it this way. We'll do a vertical orientation. We're gonna just load this up with water. And what I like to do when I'm really wetting things ahead of time is turn it to where I can see the moisture in the light and really just kind of get it spread evenly because you don't want puddles. There's a puddle right along the bottom here. You don't want that, but what you do want is an even coverage of moisture over the entire paper. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now let's start with some background. Let's just play here. Let's start with some green. Thinking about spring. Spring is just really starting here in Colorado. We've had some big snowstorms. That's kind of par for the course. Oh, which yellow should I use? Let's let's go in the Nicolazzo yellow. I really do like that one. I think we'll add some blue. I really like cobalt.
back into this, some of this quinacridone red. Things like this are really fun to do. Let's go ahead and go with some phthalo here because, you know, you don't need to really have a plan. You don't need to do a whole lot of anything, really. All you need to do is just be willing to play. And this is very relaxing, very enjoyable. Can you see how I'm letting, ooh, I like that, letting that uh, all pour around and merge and then we'll take the brush and what we're really doing is I'm rolling the excess moisture off the brush and then using it to lift up to absorb this bead that is developing on the edges here. So I'm just gonna kinda let this continue to play. go. I want to get this drip to come down here. There's another big, big blob of moisture. There we go. All right, that's a fun background. Now what I'm going to do is let that dry on its own. And let's move on to a cold press. We'll kind of do the same thing here. We'll get some more, more washi tape out. I kind of like the colors in this washi tape for inspiration. So maybe we'll do something along these lines this time. The other one we did kind of a, a rainbow blend. This one, I really like these colors, the light blue and the kind of a denim blue and then that uh, peachy orange that's in there. Start by getting everything wet again. Making sure you have everything covered. And again, no extra water on the bottom. All right, so in the colors in here, we've got the blue. Let's start with this cobalt. Boy, that's a fun one, isn't it? And then let's add some of the phthalo blue. A little more cobalt, I think. There we go. And now I'm gonna go into this raw sienna. It's a really nice color in case you don't have uh, gold ochre. I really like raw sienna. It's just a really fun color to have for earth tones. And uh, it makes nice earthy greens. You can see as it's blending here with some of these blues. There. All right, now we'll do the same thing. We'll kind of tip this around and pick up the extra along the edge. Look at all those beautiful greens that are coming out. Put a little more pigment right there. It looks like I missed a spot. There we go. And see that just by holding it up, you can really see this bead here develops. You can force it back in to your painting just by tipping it some more. You don't always have to uh, have to sop it up, but it will prevent you from getting a back run if you do lift it out like that. So let's make sure that I'm back run free here. <laughs> I think that's going to be good. One more angle. Yeah, that's okay. All right. We'll let both of these dry and I will be back and we'll see. We'll see what we can come up with on these. All right, letting those dry. And we are back through the magic of television. I cleaned my palette, surprise, surprise. Uh, look at the color shift we've had from uh, just letting watercolors dry. There is always a color shift. And if you're new to watercolor, this is a really good example of how they dry. Um, some other good examples I want to share with you in addition to the, and what I mean by that, by the color shift, is that the colors that we put down, that original intensity of the pigment is just a little bit more subtle now. 
Uh, in the paper here, this is the hot press. You can see we've got a little bit of texture from where that cobalt blue mixed with the phthalo green. Uh, over here too, that texture is called granulation. Cobalt is a natural, naturally granulating pigment, and that's a lot of fun, but it's very subtle on hot press paper. So let's take a look at the cold press paper and see what kind of granulation we got from that one. You can see down here, it almost looks like leather. To me, that's the way granulation appears. And what that means is there are heavier particles, the pigments that will sink down into all of these bumps and rivulets, the valleys in the paper, and um, the peaks will have the, the lesser pigment, the, the one that's not as intense. And the more intense pigment uh, tones will be down in those little uh, grooves and valleys of the paper. So turning this around, trying to see if I see any pictures inside of these, and this one, I can see a funny ostrich with uh, eyes and a beak here. So I'm going to try and get that out of, of my head because that's not what I want to work on. Um, let's start with this one. This is very, very misty, very whimsical. I did have a little bit of background issue back here, but you know what? In something like this, that's not going to matter. We're just going to incorporate it right in. I see it's up here as well. So what that means is um, I didn't get enough of the water off and it did start to go back in, which is just natural. Uh, it doesn't bother me in this case. This is going to be just fine. So now let's talk about doing some different kinds of layers and techniques that we can uh, with these paints. Now, I rarely use masking fluid on this channel, but what I want to try today is something that we can use washi tape as a mask. And I'm going to make some leaf shapes. We'll see how this works. I've got, let's just tear a few of these tapes off in different lengths. And let's see what we can do by masking off some leaf shapes. I'm going to take this washi tape and cut it into a leaf shape. And I'm going to do this on all of these tapes. Now this might be a little bit tedious. You don't have to do it this way. You could certainly just paint with masking fluid, or you could skip this step entirely and go right into your ink drawing or colored pencil, um, whatever you want to do next. But for us today, I rarely use masking fluid and I thought it would be kind of fun to do something that is masked off. So see, just like that, we have a leaf. Let's put this in the corner and have it coming up there. All right, I will finish masking these off and I will be right back. All right, now we're gonna have some fun with this. Let me get a new paper towel. I think I'm going to glaze over this with the yellow. When you do this, you want to use a pretty transparent paint. So I'm going to go with the Nickel Azo Yellow again because that's what we have in here already. So let me get a little puddle of that. And turn it this way for you so you can see. I want it to be fairly, fairly thin, this glaze. So I'm going to add some water to it. And I'm just going to paint over the entire piece with this Nickel Azo Yellow. Make sure we have all of everything covered. And I just want to go over it lightly because I don't want to disturb the pigment underneath. There. Making sure I've got all the little parts covered. Okay, now we'll let that one dry. And now over here, I think what I'm going to do, let's try something different with this one. Let me get a colored pencil. Now colored pencils are wax-based or oil-based, so they will provide a natural resist. And I think what I'm going to use is, let's go into this little uh, earthy color here. I have a Mars orange. That might be kind of fun. Let me get this a little bit sharper. There we go. Ooh. This is a Derwent drawing pencil. I really like these. So let's see, we've got leaves going up there. Let's see if we can do, oh, I don't know. Let's try and look at some florals and kind of dissuade my mind from <laughs> our crazy ostrich. Uh, I like this part here. It's kind of standing out. So let's make that into a flower of some kind and I'm just doing real 
simple designs here. Nothing fancy at all. So simplicity is key with this one. We're just going to keep this pretty much like the doodles you did on your notebook in high school. Very, very simple. Okay, now let's change color just a little bit. I'll go to kind of a, a gold color. I'm gonna stick within this uh, Derwent Drawing Pencils line and I'll use yellow ochre. It doesn't matter which color pencil you use. You can use whatever you have. And I think I'm gonna draw some kinds of a, like a wheat. So let's do one, one here. Just real simple. There's a lot of texture on cold press paper, so if it shows up a little bit uh, wonky looking, that's quite all right. We'll add some geometric shapes to this in a moment because I really want this one to be full of whimsy. And uh, you know, as soon as I thought of doodles on my notebook in high school, I was kind of drawn back to that time when everything was very simple and the object was more just to fill the page than it was to create anything of artistic value. And now I'd like to come in with a blue, cobalt and peacock blue. I'm gonna go ahead and do some geometric shapes. Let's make some triangles. This is your Zen opportunity to do something that is completely mindless. Spirals, lightning bolts, whatever it is that you wanna draw, go for it. And then on this one, let's just make some squiggly lines. Our older kids are 80s babies, so this one reminded me of all of the clothing patterns in the 1990s when they were growing up. There we are. And now going back to the, uh, the Mars orange, let's do something on the corners here and the edges just a little. This step really didn't have that much of an impact when it was all said and done, but it was still fun to do. There we go. Now, once again, let's grab our paintbrush and we'll go back into that raw sienna. Create a very watery puddle. And we'll go over this one in raw sienna. I think on this portion down here, I think I'm going to sneak back into the cobalt blue and go over this latter third with the blue again. Oh yeah, that's nice and dry. And then I'm going to use a, uh, an X-Acto knife here, if I can find it. Here it is. I'm going to use an X-Acto knife just to lift these tapes up just so that I can get them started. And I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see the negative painting that resulted from this. It's really kind of fun. There we go. You know, if you don't like using masking fluid or you just don't have any and don't want to go buy any, this is a really good alternative. Just use some low tack washi tape or any kind of low tack uh, masking tape and you can cut it or tear it into any shape you like and cover any portion of your painting that you don't want that glaze to cover. And when we use this Azo Gold over the glaze that was underneath, look at how it preserved that beautiful spectrum that we had underneath and then created that fine layer of gold over it to just bring us an entirely new picture. I really like this method. And now we're gonna just draw some leaves here. We're gonna kind of try and go around our leaves and then we'll connect them with the stem. So I'm not going to try and actually hit every line. I'm going to be very loose and expressive with it like this, for example. And I need another pen. My fine liners are wearing out. I think this one is a, the same. So see, I'm not even trying to exactly match where that was. I'm just getting in the general area and that way you can go a little bit faster. Just keep these very free and expressive. This fine liner came in a set. It's by Stadler, and this one measures 0.3. Okay, so now I've kind of in my mind's eye, I have all of these connected, these connected, and these connected. So with that in mind, if I draw my branch here, be like so, and this one is going to come up this way. There. So there's our simple little leaf design. Now I think we need some splatters. Here, we can use this. This is a bleed proof white. This one's very interesting because it's so thick. Now I don't wanna use this big brush though. Let me go to a smaller brush. This one's actually really good for splattering. Get 
take some of this here and water it down. There we go. Oops, I'm in this side. There we go. The only one I'm not crazy about is this one right here. So I'm just going to put a little water on that and lift it off with a paper towel. And then I can go back in and just get a dot right there. That's good enough. All right, now I'm gonna let this one dry. So there we go, there's that one. And I like that. We'll take that off the block in just a minute. Let's see what we can do to help this guy here because right now I'm not crazy about it. Let's do some adjacent geometric shapes here. I'm using a white paint pen that has a uh, fairly narrow nib, but any kind of white gel pen should work. Um, and then for these, let's do kind of an outline because why not? Why not indeed? Sometimes it's very difficult to just abandon your judgment self and create with childlike whimsy, but this is your chance. All right, and then for the flower, try and punch these up a bit. When you're working on these abstract pieces, you may be surprised. You may be halfway through it and think, oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into? This one's for sure going in the rubbish. Well, that's kind of what I felt like on this one, but you know what? I kept going and I actually ended up really liking this piece more than I thought I would. There, and uh, I think that one, we're gonna just call it good. Let's give it a shot with the heat tool and take off the tape. This is the paper separator that I like using for, uh, for these blocks. It actually came with a block when I purchased it. I think it came with a Baohong. But I like the twist to it because it's very easy to get in there and get it started. And once you get it started, then it's real easy to just come around like this. And I like doing it with this better than a palette knife because with a palette knife, I have sliced the paper like into the paper and made, uh, made it not as thick, if that makes sense. So there's that one. I'm gonna get the adhesive off of the edge here. So here we go. Here are the two cards I made today with some inspiration from Irene Christensen of Inkworks in Washington. See what you guys can do today to create some happy mail for your, uh, for your friends and family. They'd be surprised and thrilled to get something from you. Don't forget to sign your work. Always put your signature on it. I think that it uh, adds an extra personal touch and also it lets you know where you were in your art journey when you made these pieces. So I'm just going to sign my initials as I typically do. And there you have it, friends. All right, everybody. I hope that you really enjoyed this playtime today. <laughs> and take a minute and get out some art supplies. Just grab some random things and see what you can come up with. One thing I did forget to mention was the brand of paints I was using today. I may have mentioned it in passing in the beginning, but I wanted to let you know these are all Da Vinci watercolors, and I used the Nickel Azo Yellow, Quinacridone Red, Thalo Green, Cobalt, Thalo Blue, and Raw Sienna to make both of these. Now, when you are mailing these as postcards, you can give them a light coating of a UV spray, or better yet, use a dry wax, because that will help protect them from any water damage that might occur if you're mailing them in the post as a postcard. Okay, you guys, enjoy making some happy mail this week. We'll see you next time. Bye now. <laughs>